All right, and we are live. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to week seven of the UMPL main division. My name is Ark, your uh, your analyst <laughs> for the main division for season seven. Um, man, we've done six of these already, and it's uh, it's been pretty fun. And we are getting close to the end of the regular season. There is eight weeks in the regular season, so we are the week before the sort of penultimate moment where we finally break into a top eight playoff. So. We're going to get right into things. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. All right. So first things first, let's talk about standings. So a couple of teams sitting very, very comfortably at the top. Uh, Philadelphia T-Tars, San Jose Panquakes, and the Miami Malamarlins all sitting at 5-1. and one, And Golden Guy and his Philadelphia Pincers are also sitting at 4-2. and two. So uh, it goes without saying that pretty much no record is going to be indicative of playoff seating and that sort of thing, too. But those those four teams are sitting in a really really good spot. Uh, you know, you win at least one of your last week games. Those five and one teams are pretty probably guaranteed in uh, at this point. But it's a bit hard to say. A golden guy probably needs to you know be a little bit more careful. He could ease. Excuse me. He could easily drop those last two games um, if he's not careful. So we have a whole slug of teams from 5th all the way down to 14th that are still in the hunt. Uh, all those teams are at 3 and 3 or 2 and 4, which is just absolutely wild to think. Um, you know, it's it's pretty much anyone's game at this point. Even those 1 and 5 teams at this point, I feel like it's probably a given that those teams are probably out. But, you know what, they could still play spoiler for the rest of the league. So, let me know what you guys think of uh who's your who's your top 8? Who is your uh, your top four seeds for the playoffs? I would love to know. But without further ado, let's get on into the matchup. So first matchup we're going to talk about here is Grum and Galvanate. My boy Grum with Terra Probo Pass. Every single week, I, I feel Probo Pass comes every week and it does super, super well. Uh, you know, he had a crazy game against uh, D-Ray the other week. And uh, man... It's just an absolute monster, <laughs> surprisingly, uh, in, in a game where he did not even bring Roaring Moon or Iron Moth. Um, but in this matchup specifically, man, there is a lot of firepower on both sides. Um, you know, Cinderace v. Roaring Moon is nothing to scoff at. Cinderace, I feel, is going to be a very crucial player uh, in this. I could see a potential choice Scarf Cinderace, maybe with a, a little bit of Electro Ball action uh, for the Primarina. But it's likely just going to, you know, be running your standard gunk shot, uh, that kind of stuff. So, and I, I think that that's probably the safe thing to do. So, um, whether or not you want to be boots, uh, court change seems like a very real possibility. Uh, Toxtricity and Hatterene kind of deter like things with magic bounce and being a grounded poison type as far as like toxic spikes. Um, but you know, when you have Bramble Gas, when you have Probo Pass, when you have Orthworm, who are multiple, multiple setters for hazards, um, court change is a very real possibility. So I would expect Galvanate to probably have that on his radar. Uh, so I would expect maybe a Boot Cinderace with court change, uh, maybe a Pyroball Gunshot U-turn, uh, seems pretty solid into the majority of the team. So uh, I think Cinderace can carry a lot. I also think that Iron Treads is really, really good in this matchup. Um, obviously if you have the the Orthworm to contend with, uh, with Earth Eater. Um, but you know, you could just run like booster speed treads on this thing and just click buttons until you die, uh, to be totally honest. So I'm really excited to see what kind of treads comes to this game. Uh, as far as the other mons on the team, Gudra does a very good job of walling out the Iron Moth. Uh, Quackavol looks <laughs> very, very strong. I, I actually really like Scarf Quackavol in this game, uh, because CC Aqua Step or just Wave Crash, like it does. It does amazing damage into pretty much the entire team, except Primarina, which you can kind of work around, you know? So Quackable is, I feel, like a very, very important piece for Galvanate this week. Um, but the rest of the team obviously looks really, really solid too. Dedon Sparse can do a number of different things for you. Uh, you can spread Glare status. You could go for like uh, maybe a Coil set, Boom Burst with Choice Specs. Like you could do a bunch of different stuff with it. Um, Sinistra, I feel like, has a really hard time in this game, so I don't expect to see it. Uh, Toxtricity, I feel, does okay. Uh, I'm interested to see if there's, you know, a screen setup with Morgrim. Uh, I don't expect Vespaquin to be really a factor in this game too much. But on the side of Grum, I mean, you just kind of uh, stick to your guns. I feel like Grum, so far this season, has been, like, my number one or two guy as far as, like, prep is concerned. I feel like his teams are always super consistent. And I feel like he is always bringing stuff that 
does its job. Uh, there are very few times in Grum's games where I feel like he doesn't know what to do, um, which is just a really, really good advantage to have. So, I mean, Prankster Thunderous obviously just looks pretty good, uh, potentially slowing down Cinderace, Quackable with like Prankster T-Wave. I uh, have to be a little careful about Moltres switching in, but it's a Moltres. Like it's never going to switch into a Thunder Wave or t into a Thunderous to begin with. Um, but, you know, good utility on Thunderous in this game. I feel like Primarina is very, very strong. Um, you could do a number of things. I would maybe even like to see a potential sort of like sub draining kiss calm mindset on Primarina. It might have a little bit of a tough time uh, against like the treads in the Cinderace. Um, but like you fire off any water move on the treads and it's just a goner. So uh, I feel like Prim can be really solid. Volcanion, obviously, he loves Volcanion, man. Uh, I'm excited to see what he does with that this week. But um, as far as the Terra Captains are concerned, you know, I, I feel like he really wants hazards up in this game. Um, but you do, like I say, or like I had said before, you have to worry about court change a little bit. So you can offset a little bit of that with like some really, really heavy offensive pressure. Uh, you can kind of, I feel, play Roaring Moon pretty aggressively in this game. Um, I feel like a choice banded moon just looks really good i mean it's like you run iron head for the hatterene you run outrage for like almost everything else um and for the treads you know it's like you get a big knock off on that thing you do something else with it um you know there's there's a number of different things that can be like really 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 good so uh man this game is really really close uh, on paper for me i feel like galvanate has better win conditions uh but i feel like grum has been prepping very very solid so um Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to go Galvanate in this one, but it's very, very close. So let's get on in to match number two. So we have one crash and my boy Pokebaldi. All right, let's see. <laughs> Man, I, I just like one crash's team so much. It's like he's got such, such funny options. Uh, so for this game especially, um, uh, Tarapagos with boots seems pretty good. I, I'm not sure how much you're really worried about hazard stacking. For I, I mean, you're, a lot of your team is weak to rocks, right? So I like the fact of putting boots on Tarapagos this week. It's kind of the boring way to play Tarapagos, but I feel like he's run very offensive Tarapagos the last couple of weeks. Um, so I think you want sort of a boot spinner set to kind of be your like I don't lose button in this game uh, because with your Terra Shell you know just in case like Choice Banded Dragonite starts popping off or you have like any kind of setup like <laughs> Empoleon with competitive uh, like Shell Smash or Terra that sort of thing um, so I think like a utility Terrapagos makes a lot of sense uh, I feel like a Mirror Herb on something this week also just looks really really solid uh, just because, you know, Torterra and Dragonite and, like, potentially Darkrai or even Rotom, uh, like, to set up. Even Mesprit, too. So, I mean, Mirror Herb, like, Lucario could be really cool. Uh, Mirror Herb, like, Raging Bolt could actually be really, really fun to use. Uh, speaking of Raging Bolt, Raging Bolt goes stupid in this game, I feel. I, I feel like Thunderbolt, Dark Pulse, or Dragon Pulse hits, like, what doesn't it hit? Like, it, it hits everything. <laughs> like, it hits everything. Uh, so I, I think Raging Bolt, it looks very, very promising on the offensive side for uh, one crash this week. But uh, as far as the other mons on the week, I think Screamtail does a really good job of walling out the Dark Rye. Uh, I don't think you really need to be, like, Kebia Berry to tank, like, Sludge Bombs and stuff. Uh, I feel like just, like, a Max Bedef Screamtail or a very specially defensive Screamtail makes a lot of sense. It's a really good lead. You can set up rocks. You don't have to deal with like Flash Cannon from Empoleon doing a ton to you unless it's like Choice Specs or something. Um, so I think that those are really, really good pieces for one crash to build around. Um, as far as spinners on Baldi's side, he's got what? The Aleki and the Hitmonchan? Uh, so, I mean... <sighs> I'm not sure that you really want to be webs in this game because Mesprit and Rotom aren't affected by them anyway. And you give Empoleon like that competitive boost, which you really don't want to do. Um, so I'm interested to see how one crash sort of builds out the rest of the roster. Um, and, and kind of utilizes that sort of thing too. Uh, Terra Charizard in this game, I feel can be a, a big heavy hitter if he brings the right set for it too. So uh, as far as Baldi, um, man, like I say it every week too. Uh, Baldi's team is really, really cool. Um, also, don't mind that it says week six matchups up here. I just realized that this is actually week seven. Um, so I'm actually just going to cut my video and I'm going to change that. All right. 
I'm back, and you guys saw nothing. So, <laughs> welcome back to your week seven matchups, not six. Um, as I was saying with uh, Baldi's roster, I, I really like Baldi's roster a lot. I feel like it's just got a lot of heavy outers. Um, I feel like defensive Rotom in this matchup just looks really, really good against a lot of the team. Uh, pain split on that thing to soak hits, I feel, is just going to be really, really solid. Um as far as other mons on your team, a Dragonite just looks really, really good uh, against a lot of the team. There is not a whole lot that likes to take hits um, from one crash. Potentially, uh, you could potentially go like a mixed Dragonite set or even special Dragonite looks kind of cool this week um, because Skarmory is a pretty reliable switch in to the Dragonite. So I feel like, you know, if you're running like Flamethrower Fire Blast or something on the D-Knight to, to get through the Skarmory, that could be really, really cool. Um... As far as the rest of the team is concerned, I, I feel like Mesprit is kind of a must bring in this game too. Uh, I feel like it just does a really good job uh, being that utility mon that you need it for, even if it's just like rocks knock off you turn, uh, that sort of thing. You know what I mean? So um, as far as Regilecki in this game, I feel like Alecki is actually really good um, for the most part. Obviously there's a Quagsire, but if I'm one crash and I like am feeling scared of a lucky and bringing Quagsire, there's a Torterra there too. Um, obviously, you know, Quagsire is probably rocking like an ice beam or something to deal with it, but you do have to worry about potentially Torterra switching in or just like anything running a grass move um, from Baldi. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, man, a, a really fun game on paper. Uh, I feel. Like one crash has some really good counter team building opportunities in this game. So I think I'm going to give him a very slight edge. But with that being said, Baldi is kind of like Grum in the respect where he just preps super well each week. And like, he always has an answer for stuff. Um, so I feel like it's gonna it's gonna be a very close game regardless, but that is what we're gonna go with. So up next, we have Darude and Grandmaster D-Ray. Very fun roster matchup right here. Okay. So, man, what a crazy matchup for D-Ray to have to fight. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. Greninja looks absolutely devious in this game. Holy Greninja is so free. Holy Greninja is actually so free in this game. Um, man. I feel like I don't really have anything else to say at the moment. Uh, like, Battle Bond Greninja, if it gets a kill, I feel like it just wins the game. I think the only thing that really counters Greninja in this game is Azumarill. Uh, and Greninja could potentially be like Gunk Shot, <laughs> which is also just really crazy. Uh, so with that being said, Darude, Greninja looks really, 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 really good in this game. I don't think I've ever seen a matchup where it's better. Uh, because, you know, it's like you water move the Great Tusk, you ice beam the Zapdos, you can hit Weavile with literally anything. You can low kink the King Gambit, you can gunk shot the Azumarill, you can dark pulse the Espeon, you can water move Clamora, you can ice beam the Appleton before Terra. So, like, I feel like the only thing that's going to be bad for Greninja in this game is that it's going to get real bad, like five move syndrome, where it's going to want to run all of the moves I just listed, plus maybe one or two more. Uh, but like, it does so much work. Like, you can just play a fast game, sack something off, go Greninja, get a kill, do it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so it's it's crazy. Uh, Goldengo, I feel, is a little bit tougher to use. Uh, Great Tusk and the Weavile and the King Gamut kind of eat it for breakfast. Um, but with that being said, I also feel like Lando has a really, really strong matchup in this game. Raikou does a great job of countering, like Azumarill being a bulky set. Um, you could also just run Aurasphere, get rid of Weavile and that sort of stuff too. Uh, AV on the Raikou or like Shookaberry or Air Balloon to get around uh, the Great Tusk potentially could be really, really solid. Man, it's just like, man, man Darude's got such a good matchup. Like, I feel like a lot of his team does a really, really good job into D-Race. Um, Toad Scroll? Does Toad Scroll do anything in this game? Um, I don't know. The rest of the team, Embor potentially looks pretty dang good here, too. Uh, a fast Embor set, even if it's like Choice Scar, Flame Charge, I feel like Embor could actually be really cool, too. Um, but I'm interested to see kind of what he does with the, the Terra Captains in this game. So with that being said, D-Ray is a very good player. And D-Ray is going to find a way to, to work through this nightmare that is Greninja. So uh, I would expect maybe like a Choice Scarf Zapdos or something to get it like a, on on the high end of the speed tiers. Or just something that contends with it. Uh, Terra Ground, Braviary, or like playing the guessing game with Terra might be an option. Uh I feel like Appleton is maybe his best chance of dealing with Greninja, ironically. Uh, Terra Fairy 
or Terra Steel actually looks really, really solid. Um, so he can work around it, but it is going to be pretty tough. Um, it is going to be pretty tough. Uh, Great Tusk, a booster Great Tusk in this game looks pretty good. Or you could go like Clear Amulet so you don't have to worry about Lando. You could Ice Spinner that thing. So, I mean, Weavile <laughs> obviously does a really good job into Lando. Now that I'm kind of thinking about it, maybe Landorus is not that great. <laughs> um, but with that being said, I mean, it's a Landorus. So you would expect it to maybe make an appearance. Um, as far as the rest of the team for D-Ray, uh, like Azumarill presents a pretty interesting win condition. I mean, it's kind of the boring option to go like a belly drum set. Uh, but it could potentially do really well if a Raquinid is not there. Um, so you can kind of be a little creative on how you how you pivot around those six. I think Lamora Hazard stacking is a very, very real thing for this week too. Uh, you definitely want chip on things like the Raikou, the Greninja, um, Embor if it's coming in and not wearing boots, that sort of thing too. So if D-Ray can find a way to get that like little bit of chip damage and then get his one or two offensive threats that he brings for the week like really over the top, um, I feel like he might be all right. Uh, booster speed, Great Tusk. Uh, potentially with like rapid spin so like he can be even faster um i feel is pretty dang pretty dang good i feel like great tusk actually presents a really really big problem for darude if he lets it get out of control so uh he has the tools he's gonna have to play smart though so uh with that in mind i just feel like darude's got such great pressure with his top end in this game so i have to pick him uh but i am very very open to being wrong and i feel like this is going to be a really fun game to watch so up next we have emerald miner and honky donkey uh fun fun matchup here so what do we got rocking for for this um man bundle looks bundle looks good again <laughs> um I, I feel like every time honky plays the game i just have to look at bundle right away and be like how many mons does bundle actually kill in this game uh and the answer is a l maybe not a ton uh, it's gonna kill the latios it's gonna kill the samurai it's gonna kill the claude sire it's gonna kill the shaman gonna kill the flamigo like hit your hydro pumps or, or whatever water move you decide to use um but then it's like obviously you want to build support around it so um i would expect maybe a bulky latios set or like metagross into bundle actually av metagross actually looks quite good uh, this week, for the most part, I think even especially like with an Amorous and Earth Power, that sort of thing. Um, Miss Magius, he could even take hits from that too. Or, or potentially, uh, we go with maybe a an, like Agility Weakness Policy Metagross. Um, which looks pretty nasty now that I'm thinking about it. Um, Psychic Fangs plus like Ground Type move maybe just looks like really really solid for metagross um and i feel like emerald miner has been doing like really really well with prep lately too flamigo surprisingly has been like such a big threat just to keep in the back um even just slapping a choice scarf on that thing seems like really really solid hariyama has been a pretty pretty big staple in hunky's defensive efforts over the past couple of weeks um but any of those terror types don't do amazing <laughs> against flamigo so um It'll be interesting to see how how that kind of plays out. So, uh, let's see what else are we looking at here. Uh, how does Gliscor fare? Um, Gliscor could actually make an appearance in this game. I feel like it's not checked by a ton. With that being said, Emerald Miner was an absolute baller and <laughs> brought Power Herb, uh, Meteor Beam, Clefable to deal with Gouging Fire. So, Ice Beam Clefable seems like it could be a pretty <laughs> stellar option as well. So, um, man, man, this is such a weird match. This is so fun. Uh, let's see. What else can? What else is Hunky looking at in this matchup? Um, hmm. <laughs> Haxorus? How's Haxorus look? Haxorus looks really good, actually. Wow. Uh, Choice Banded Haxorus actually looks nasty. Uh, now that I'm looking at it. Choice Banded uh, First Impression for both Latias and the Samurai. You can go Iron Head for the Clefable. You could go um, Earthquake for Metagross and Claude Sire, and you could run Outrage for like the rest of the team, uh, which is an issue, <laughs> an issue to say the least, or your Dragon Dance. Uh, if you're Dragon Dance and you have the ability to cycle through those moves, it's it's even better. So uh, with that being said, Emerald Miner is probably gonna put a pretty big focus on that thing for the week. But I mean, Slow King Galler for Pivot obviously looks really amazing. In Amorous, you can do a number of different things with that. Uh, not sure for some of the other mods like Serena or like Quillfish in this matchup, although you do want a little bit of hazard insurance. So uh, I'm interested to see what Hunky does. Um, 
But as far as Emerald Miner is concerned, uh, I think you kind of stick to your guns. You know, offensive Metagross looks like a very real thing. Uh, some sort of utility Clefable, run Ice Beam, kind of give yourself options against like Bundle, Gliscor, uh, even the Enamorous, even like an unaware stored power set on Clef. Uh, looks pretty good if Quillfish isn't there. Uh, so I, man, man, this is crazy. <sighs> All of these games, every single week, they're always so close. There are so few games where I'm just like, yeah, this person wins. Um, hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to use my one cop out for this matchup and I'm going to leave this one up to you. So I'm going to chalk it up to a 50-50. You guys let me know in the comments who wins this matchup. So let's move on to our next match, which is a Viz uh, against Golden Guy. Uh, this matchup is pretty crazy. I actually talked a little bit to Golden Guy about this matchup. Uh, so I kind of have an idea of what he was planning to bring to the match. Um, and it was a pretty cool set, but I'll, I'll wait for you guys uh, to watch the game so you guys can see it for yourself. But as far as the matchup is concerned, uh, you know, Sun is very, very difficult to deal with. And Golden Guy's team can either take it one route where he kind of goes for the counter weather strategy and kind of tries to play the slow game, or they go for the more fast approach, try and just punch him in the mouth and, and do that sort of thing too. So um, right as I'm looking at this, Latios looks very good if it is choice scarfed. Um, I believe it's base 110 speed, which makes it one point faster than walking wake, which makes it faster than booster speed walking wake, makes it faster than booster speed gouging fire. Uh, Torn is probably not going to be choice scarf, so it's faster than that. It's faster than Sandy Shocks, than Slither Wing. It's faster than everything. Uh, so dropping Draco Meteors is free, unless there is a Terry Fairies, Terra Fairies gun take. Um, so I'm really looking forward to Latios uh, in this game. I feel like it does really, really good work. Uh, AV Mamoswine potentially, or just like something <clears throat> to sort of contend potentially with Tornadus just swapping in and getting Regenerator stuff all the time. Um, also does a great job hitting Sandy Shocks. You could probably eat Power Gems and stuff like that too. Uh, Executor before Terra. So like Mamo with Thick Fat to offset some of that fire damage obviously looks really, really solid. Cezor, you're staying at home, buddy. Uh, this is not a week for you. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, <clears throat> Colossal, I think, looks really, really good as a defensive check. Uh, so does Iron Hands. Uh, Colossal, especially with Terra, uh, I feel like a, you know, like a Terra water set might not even be that bad. Um, Flame body procs on potentially like Slither Wing or like punishing flip turns from Walking Wake and stuff could be really good. Or you could take it the other direction and go for like Flash Fire to potentially like eat hits from Torkoal, from Gouging Fire. Like I feel like Cole could be like the ultimate Gouging Fire answer if you're like Terra Grass with Flash Fire. Uh, I feel like Gouging just doesn't do anything to it, which is really, really cool. So uh, I think Golden Guy's got a really, really solid matchup. Uh, on the side of Viz, uh, I feel like you have to be... <laughs> Man, he, he's got always some some crazy, crazy ideas uh, that he's cooking. I honestly think that Doug Trio looks pretty good in this game. Um, depends on your Terra. I don't think you're Terra Ground. Uh, you could potentially go Terra Fire Doug Trio, uh, and that hits a lot of stuff. Um, Latios is obviously a problem, but you can Sucker Punch it if you're like Joyce Bandit or something. Uh, Terra Steel into Mamoswine looks really good. Terra Steel into like a few Mons looks pretty decent along with your ground stab. So uh, I'm interested to see if uh, Doug Trio makes an appearance at all here. Um, but apart from that, I mean, it's like, man, what do you, what else do you do? I, I, I'm still waiting for it. I'm still waiting for the, the super bulky spadef gouging fire dragon dance set, whereas dragon dance breaking swipe, uh, morning sun and something else. Um, but is it hard to do in this game? I feel like it might be. Um, it just depends. You got to get it in the right scenario. So if Latios potentially comes out and Draco Meteor or something and you can go free gouging afterwards and get a Dragon Dance up, that seems like it's a pretty solid win condition for you. So uh, I would like to see like some hazard stacking with Sandy Shocks and potentially Torkoal this week. Um, kind of force Golden Guy into bringing his spinners with like Tentacruel and stuff. Uh, Colossal probably runs spin in this game too. But uh, if you find a way to pivot around those very specific defensive checks, I feel like Viz has a pretty decent chance. But at the end of the day, I think I'm taking Golden Guy in this one uh, just because I feel like some of his top end is just really, really strong into Sun. Um, and if it's not checked in the way that it needs to be, uh, I can really run away with the game. So let's move on to Ruppy and it's Danny Beck. Uh, this is, man, a tale of, of some crazy rosters. Uh, I think that Blood Moon Slow King used to be on, on Danny's roster, actually. So a little bit of deja vu there. Um, 
But man, uh, the first thing that's kind of jumping off the page, actually, hmm, I, I always look at like the big, big top tier threats right away. And I was like, man, Rillaboom, Antisloking, and Blood Moon? Ooh, that looks good. But then I realized there's an Orcaladon. There's a Noivern that four times resists grass. <laughs> there's a Muck there. Uh, so Rillaboom seems pretty polarizing uh, in this game for the most part. So um, I feel like uh, you don't like Choice Band the Boom in this game. Maybe an AV set would actually be kind of cool. Um, you could just like run Knock Off, Grassy Glide, potentially U-Turn to get some good pivot. You could run Leech Seed maybe. Um, so I think Rillaboom definitely makes an appearance here, but I don't think it's like max offense because our Caledon is, is a very real issue. But... It's a good thing that you have an Unburdened Sweeper in Sneasler, which looks... Looks really good. <laughs> it looks really, really good in this game. Uh, CC plus Dire Claw uh, looks pretty free into just about every Pokemon on this team. Um, so you are kind of looking for probably Muck. Uh, Muck checking Boom and Sneasler is a very real possibility. Uh, just staying poison. Um... I feel like you want to be like max defense, maybe Rocky Helmet Muck in this game. Uh, you could run Pain Split, you could run Daring Punch, that sort of thing. Muck, ironically being the first Mon that I really talk about for Ruppy is really funny, but I think that it's a very real thing for him to uh, consider. Uh, also does a really good job of dealing with Overquill potentially. So you just need to find a way to keep Muck resilient in this game, I feel. But it could do a lot of work for you. Um, as far as the rest of the team for Danny here, Dragapult, you could do... 18 million different things with Dragapult, so I'm not really gonna gonna try to, you know, <laughs> deduce what he could be doing with it. Um, a fast status set this week might not be awful to potentially, you know, cripple things like the Noivern, but like even just going offensive, like Choice Packs Dragapult actually just looks really, really good tier two. Um, the big thing for Danny here is just making sure you have a check for the Arcaladon, just in case it gets like one stamina boost, two stamina boosts. Um, and ironically, I feel like Sandaconda does a pretty good job of doing that. If you're like a coil set or AV potentially, um, Arcanine Hisui <laughs> with just like that rockhead choice band still does a lot of damage. Uh, but you're going to have to be very careful about the way that you pivot on the Arcaladon. So I'd be really careful on like U-turns with Rillaboom and the Dragapult and potentially like some other things like Overquill. Like I think Overquill gets flipped turn. Maybe it doesn't. Um, but man, even Manaphy, actually Manaphy looks really good in this game too. Um, obviously Whimsicott is there to potentially deter you with some prankster stuff, but like a Tail Glow Manaphy actually looks really, really good too. too. Um, man, Danny, Danny has offensive threats up and down his roster, so I'm really excited to see what he brings. Uh, on the side of Ruppy though, um, our Caledon I feel like is a must bring uh, just to deal with potentially, you know, uh, things like the Rillaboom, um, Maybe you are just like super, super, super physically bulky this week too, um, which I think would make a lot of sense for dealing with things like the Sandaconda, the Arcanine, the Sneezer potentially. So, man, uh, Arcaladon's such a cool Pokemon. I really wish that I, <laughs> I uh, have been able to use it more, but it's on my list for things that I want to use more in the future. Uh, talked about Muck already. Muck is really, really cool. Uh, you should bring Muck in this game, Ruppy. Uh, but as far as some of the other things that you want to do here, uh, Mimikyu being kind of the fail-safe option. Shadow Sneak is a really good check for the Dragapult. Um, obviously, you have some other things to potentially contend with there. Uh, but Noivern also looks like very, very good. Um, you could potentially just, you know, get over the... Like, before Sneasel is Burden, like, Dragon plus Flying Stab looks really, really solid into the remainder of Danny's roster. Uh, you have Flamethrower for the Fortress, so... Boots on the Noiver makes sense to deal, like not deal with rocks and stuff, but um, I feel like even just a Choice Specs Noiver just looks really good. Uh, what else? What else? The Blood Moon plus Sloking. I feel like Blood Moon and Sloking just have a, such a hard time doing anything. Um, maybe they don't. I don't know. It, it, it's a bit tricky because like Rillaboom just pressures them both so, so well. And Manaphy can come in and just like take heart and do whatever it wants to. Um, but with that being said, it is an Ursa Luna Blood Moon, and Blood Moon hurts really, really bad. So, um, you know, Ursa might be one of those, like, revenge killer type Pokemon in this game where it's not really, like, switching in on stuff very often. Uh, but just getting a Blood Moon off here and there, it just seems like a very, very solid thing to do. Uh, you have Vacuum Wave potentially to deal with, like, Fast Arcanine and stuff, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. So, um, 
on paper, I feel like I want to go with Danny in this game, uh, but I'm still unsure. It, it depends on how much work muck <laughs> I feel puts it in this game for me personally. Uh, but obviously, you know, it's uh, still up in the air. So uh, up next, I think we have two games left to talk about if I'm if I've been counting already. Like all right, <laughs> um, we have Tone and Dapper Snapper. So man. This is the snow tip. Man, Iron Crown popped off last week. I remember watching, like, it just totally, like, one shot a, a Gliscor, which was just crazy <laughs> for me to think about. Um, but, man, uh, as far as tone is concerned here, Annihilate just looks... It looks like an Annihilate. <laughs> Annihilate looks really, really good, man. Um, Iron Crown, I feel, is also just like a really, really solid option. Um, obviously, you know, like there's some ground pressure from Dawn Fan and like some other things, Earthquake from Bax Caliber and that sort of thing. But like, there's no Tachyon Cutter real switch in, I feel. Um, obviously, you could go like a bulky Spidef Rotomore, potentially like a Keldeo, but like you could just Volt switch on out afterwards. So Iron Crown, I feel like, does a really, really good job in this matchup already. Uh, Kill a Watcher with Weather Ball could be kind of fun, but I mean, Ice type moves aren't amazing <laughs> into Dapper's roster now. Um, but I feel like, you know, uh, Thunderbolt Spam looks okay for the most part. So uh, Blastoise looks like it could put in a lot of work on the physical defensive side this week. Um, Torterra is not a part of Tone's roster anymore. This should be an Arboliva and uh, a Go Goat, I believe. Uh, so I'll be sure to make that change for next week. But um, both of them probably don't make an appearance this game. Uh, Arboliva is a Terra captain, so there is a chance that it might. Um, but Unburdened Grafai to potentially get on top of like a bear tick that is under Slush Rush seems like a relatively decent thing for a check. Uh, so like Sword Stance, like Focus Ash Grafai, uh, but there is, you know, a fair amount of priority on Dapper's side as well. So uh, I feel like Tone's got a lot of really, really solid options. <laughs> Garchop, I feel like, has a bit of a hard time uh, fighting against, you know, bear tick, nine tails, Max Caliber. Uh, but Tone might be able to find a way to make it work. Um, Deancey as well. A, a Trick Room Deancey. Uh, like he's run the set like a number of times before, uh, but I feel like that also just looks really good here too. So, uh, as far as Dapper is concerned here, big backs, baby. Uh, backs caliber. Wow, backs caliber looks really good. Uh, clear amulet potentially to deal with sin or uh, the incineroar coming in. Uh, but like if you can get a dragon dance or two off on backs, it's gonna go to town, it's gonna just destroy everything in its path. Uh, so big backs looks really, really threatening here. Uh, feel like you want to get rocks up for some decent chip into things like you know, like the incineroar coming in, annihilate, so you don't have to give it rage like Rage Fist stacks and that sort of thing too. But uh, I really like Dapper's matchup. Uh, I feel like he's got a number of things that deal pretty well with uh, a lot of the things that Tone wants to do. I talked a little bit about Iron Crumb. It looks really good, but I think Heatran actually does a really good job of checking that. Um, and seems like a pretty free swap for the most part. Uh, Tone may be a bit hesitant to bring some of his mons that have really big ground pressure, like the Torterra, the Garchomp, that sort of thing. Uh, so maybe Heatran has a little bit of an easier time this week having to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, Mew, it can be the Swiss Army Knife. Like, I, I can't even begin to think of what kind of Mew you want to build, but... Whenever I've used Mew and Draft, I usually, it's the sixth Mon I built because I get the things that I need and then I was like, okay, what do I need Mew to do that I don't already have? Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what Dapper decides in uh, that regard. But uh, Terra Ambipom with, you know, Terra Normal even just looks like it does some really, really silly damage. Um, so I feel like this game is really, really close, but I feel like Dapper actually has a slight edge. Um... It's going to depend uh, largely on potentially Grafai if that can get going um, and what kind of offensive threats Tone pieces together with maybe deciding to leave Garchomp and some other things uh, behind. So, and then I believe, yes, this is our last matchup to talk about, and that is Gentleman Thomas and Kyle. Uh, wow. This is a really cool matchup to be sort of our last one to talk about here. So, um, the, the duel between Valiant, Kiram, and like Petrarunt Tinglu against Palafin, Miascarada, and uh, the rest of Kyle's crazy, crazy roster. Um, Kyle's game last week was insane, insane stuff uh, against Ruppy. Um, but man, okay, let's, let's lock in for this. So, 
Palafin is quite good <laughs> to Thomas's team. Uh, quite good. Uh, Quillfish, I feel, is going to have to be like pretty physically bulky potentially to deal with it. Um, Petrant, obviously, with base 160 defense or whatever it is, is just really, really amazing. Uh, so I'm expecting maybe a very physical, like, Rocky Helmet Petrant with Recover to sort of deal with the Palafin in this game. Um, because Wave Crash spam and Close Combat spam into the rest of Gentleman Thomas's team is pretty free. Um, Jet Punch helps deal with Zangoose because Zangoose is not faster with Quick Attack, which is really, really useful as well. Uh, so Palafin looks very good. Uh, Meowskarata spamming knockoff and flower trick and yeah at like play rough also just looks like Meowskarata and Palafin are a problem for uh, Thomas to deal with in this game which is really really crazy um, Gengar I also feel looks really really good uh, choice specs in Gengar especially uh, you could even scarf it, you know, Sludge Wave plus Psychic plus Focus Blast if you can land it on the Tinglu and the Kiram. Uh, looks pretty, really, like, pretty solid. Uh, a lot of those top threats from Thomas are the things that I'm really kind of focusing on, but it's going to be it's gonna be tricky. Um, as far as Talonflame in this game for Thomas, I feel like you might want to be Gale Wings uh, just in case. A Choice Banded, like, Dual Wing Beat set potentially uh, to deal with, like, Sash Mascarada. Or, you know, pretty much anything else looks looks pretty dang solid. Obviously, you know, Talent Flame doesn't do great into like Electrode or potentially like Deoxys, but you can just pivot on out with U turn or uh, just hard switch too. So, um, as far as Thomas is concerned in this game, it's it's gonna come down to kind of like how you deal with those top two threats, like I said. Um, now, Scarretta on the physical side. Man, Meowskarada can do a number, but I feel like Talonflame, even it, maybe maybe just bulky Talonflame is enough um, to counter the Meowskarada and then use Petrarunt for the Palafin. So, um, but then you have to <laughs> you have to play the other mods on your team in such a way where um, you kind of counter the rest of the the roster there. So, uh, lots of interesting stuff for Gentleman Thomas to think about here. Uh, as far as uh, Kyle is concerned, talked about those top two threats and Gengar a little bit already. Uh, Gudra looks very very solid dealing with Kiram in sense like in this game. Uh, Kiram could go physical, but Kiram doesn't really have the coverage to deal with Gudra on the physical side. And like Earth Power is going to do like nothing to Gudra if he's a salt vest <laughs> to begin with. So um, I feel like Gudra does a great job of also countering like things like the Petrant. Um, you know, you're not having to worry about like poison puppeteer stuff at all. So that's uh, something that's very interesting to think about too. So um it's, it's going to come down, I feel, for me, what those bottom five mons for Kyle do in this game. Uh, Gigas. Gigas is interesting. I just like Valiant just looks so good all the time, man. It's just got such good coverage into everything. And like CC blows up like half of this roster, um, which is really uh, a, a little bit of an issue, right? So uh, Fast Electrode with like Terra Fairy looks like it could be like a really reasonable thing in this game. Uh, does a little bit to Tinglu, like helps deal with Kiram. Um, the Tinglu is the only ground type that you have to worry about like Volt switching on, but you might be able to just rattle off a couple of Terra Blasts, maybe get some chip there, uh, and do some things of the like. So, um, I feel like Thomas is a prep monster and brings like really, really solid stuff all the time, but I also feel like Kyle is very creative. And I feel like Kyle's gonna bring something that maybe Thomas isn't necessarily prepared for. Um, and I think that if Palafin and Meowskarada are positioned effectively in this game, I'm gonna give the edge to Kyle, but I feel like this is a very, very close match. So, that is your week seven preview gang. I hope you guys enjoyed as always. And um, let me know what you guys think. And let me know which match you're most excited for in week seven. And with that, I will see you for your week eight preview before we start breaking down potential playoff situations and things like that. So like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.